Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with the Farmer's Frittata. That's right, out of all the types of omelets, the Italian style frittata is my favorite. And out of all the frittatas, my favorite is the Farmer's Frittata, since it is loaded with fresh vegetables and cheese. And as you'll see, a little touch of bacon. And by the way, if you're wondering which farmer this recipe came from, due to a fairly strict non-disclosure agreement, I'm not able to say, but they did want you to know they're very happy to be sharing and that we should get started by prepping the vegetables, which is going to include some absolutely gorgeous summer squash, as well as some red onion and some homegrown peppers. And as far as the peppers and onions go, all we have to do is dice those up and we're ready to roll. But when it comes to our zucchini and yellow squash, we need to prep those in a very specific way. And even if you never make this frittata, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to how we do this, since what it does to the texture and flavor of the vegetables is nothing short of magical. And what we'll do after having and quartering this gray zucchini is go ahead and slice it into about three quarter inch pieces. Right, one of the keys to the farmer's frittata is cutting the summer squash to the right size, which should be about what you're seeing right here. Okay, the farmers tried to cut thinner, as well as cut thicker, and it just did not work out as well. So about three quarters of an inch seems to be the magical measurement. So I cut up the rest of my zucchini and then did the yellow squash the exact same size. And then once we have all our summer squash transferred into a bowl, prepare to be possibly shocked. Since what we're gonna do is sprinkle over two tablespoons of kosher salt. And then we'll give everything a toss until it's evenly coated. And if you're thinking that can't be right, that's not even gonna be edible. Well, please relax, it's gonna be extremely edible as in by far the best tasting zucchini and squash you've ever had. And that's because we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes, tossing occasionally. And what's gonna happen is that tremendous amount of salt is gonna pull liquid out of the squash, as in a lot of liquid, as hopefully you're gonna be able to see here. And not only is extracting that liquid gonna concentrate the flavor, it's also gonna remove a lot of the bitterness, and your squash will have a much sweeter, delicious flavor that you may have never experienced before. So we will let that sit for 15 minutes, at which point we'll head to the sink and rinse it very, very, very thoroughly in cold water and then let it drain for at least 15 minutes in a colander. And by the way, not only does this provide more flavor and a better flavor, it also improves the texture once cooked as well. So it's your classic win-win-win. And that's it, while that's draining, we can head to the stove and we will pour a very generous amount of olive oil into the pan we're gonna make our frittata. And we'll set our heat to medium and then transfer in just one slice of bacon that we've cut into like quarter inch pieces. And what we'll do is cook that bacon in the olive oil until it's just about crisp before we add our vegetables. And yes, it might be tempting to add more than one slice of bacon, but the farmer and I don't think you should. Okay, we're just adding a little bit of porky goodness in the background, but we don't want our frittata to taste like bacon. We just want it to elevate the other ingredients. And since that's gonna take a few minutes, while we're waiting, we can go ahead and dice up our peppers and onions as well as grate and crumble our cheese. And besides pigs to make bacon with, the farmer also has cows and goats, which is why we're going with a combo of aged cheddar, and then some beautifully creamy fresh goat cheese. And then the last thing we'll need to prep while our bacon cooks would be our eggs. Oh yeah, farmer's got chickens too. And what we'll do is season up eight large eggs with a big pinch of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and of course some cayenne. And then if we want, if we have them, we can add some sliced green onions or chives. All right, these are just some really small green onions. At which point we'll beat all this together with a fork. And by the way, if you want to add some egg friendly herbs into this, this would be the point. But the farmer doesn't want too many things going on here. Okay, keeping this thing relatively simple is one of the secrets. And that's it, we'll go back and check our bacon, which by now is fully rendered and getting crisp. So what we'll do is raise our heat to medium high and we will toss in our peppers and onions, along with a nice big pinch of salt, and of course, if you don't eat meat, you don't have to use the bacon here. That is obviously gonna be up to you. I mean, you are after all the farmer of your karma. And this will still be amazing if you don't, but the farmer definitely adds it, and so do I. And what we'll do is cook this stirring for about three minutes or so, until our peppers just start to soften up and our onions start to turn translucent. And thanks to the moisture in those vegetables, the bacon is not really gonna get any crisper, so we don't have to worry about that going too far. And that's it, once we're happy with our onions and peppers, we'll go ahead and transfer in our very, very well-drained zucchini and squash. And we will very, very carefully stir that all together because yes, it barely fits. And the reason we don't wanna use a bigger pan, which would make this easier, 
is because the farmer's frittata needs to be a certain height and a certain thickness to provide optimal enjoyment. So we will simply toss and stir carefully and we will cook that squash still on medium high heat for maybe five minutes or so or until it's just barely tender as tested with the tip of a knife. Oh, and by the way, do you see any water in the bottom of the pan? No, neither do I. And that's because of that all important salting of the squash step. Okay, by drawing out that excess liquid at that point, we do not have to worry about that leaking out into our pan. And that's it, once we've determined our squash is cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and toss in our cheddar cheese, but not our goat cheese. Okay, we're gonna put that on last. But anyway, we'll toss in our cheddar, followed by our egg mixture. And then here's the game plan. We will take a spatula and start to stir this together, sort of kind of like we were making scrambled eggs. And we will do that for about 30 to 45 seconds or so, or until our egg mixture just starts to thicken up, which really does not take that long since there's a tremendous amount of heat in those vegetables. And as soon as that happens, we'll give our pan the old shake a shake -a, at which point we'll turn off the heat, and then we'll go around the edge with the spatula like this, sort of pushing down those edges towards the middle, which we are only doing for visual purposes, so that the appearance of our final product looks like that of a traditional frittata, which as you might know is flipped in the pan, but we are not flipping ours. We are simply gonna finish this for a few minutes under the broiler. But before we do, we have to add our crumbled goat cheese to the top in nice relatively large clumps. And you can, if you want, kind of poke those down into the surface a little bit. But I think this looks a little cooler and more rustic if we don't. And by the way, if we were going to flip this and use the traditional method where we cook both sides of the frittata on the stove, we would not be able to do this, right? We'd have to mix that goat cheese in, which would definitely affect the texture. So not only do I think this is easier and looks better, I think the texture inside the frittata is going to be better as well. And that's it. Once the top's been cheesed, the last thing the farmer likes to do is drizzle the top lightly with olive oil before transferring this under a broiler set on high where we'll let it finish cooking for about two or three minutes or until it looks like this. Oh yeah, now that is beautiful. And besides the visual clues, like our surface is lightly browned, we can also tell by giving this the old, old polka polka to make sure everything's just barely firmed up. Okay, if it's still raw, your finger's gonna poke right in and it's gonna be soft. But if it springs back ever so lightly, it's perfect. And then as a finishing touch, I scattered a few more green onions over the top that are so young and small they look like chives. And then I usually let this cool for at least five minutes before transferring this onto a plate to serve. And one of the great things about the frittata is that it's great hot, warm, room temp, and cold. So you go ahead and serve this up at any point you want. But personally, I think this is at its maximum magnificence if it's just barely warm. So I waited about 10 or 15 minutes before cutting a slice which I'm gonna do alongside some toasted buttered bread. And I could not have been more thrilled with how it looked. Okay, the farmer's frittata is always a beautiful frittata. I mean, just look at that cross section. And if everything's gone according to plan, we should be looking at just about an equal ratio between vegetables and then cheese and eggs, which is pretty much what I have here. But anyway, enough looking, let's get to the eating. And that, my friends, is gonna be one of the best omelets you ever eat in your life just visually, texturally, flavor-wise, it just doesn't get any better than this. And let's just for a second forget you're eating the best frittata of your life. What's really gonna blow you away is that sweet, savory flavor of the squash. Okay, I know we already talked about it, but I cannot stress how important that salting step is. I mean, it really is like you're eating an entirely different vegetable. If you compare this to a zucchini or a piece of squash you just simply cut and saute, all right, not even close. In fact, Michelle was never a big fan of zucchini until she met me and my salting method. And now she's a huge fan and insists we do it that way all the time. And then one of the other keys here, besides that very small but critical amount of bacon, is the combination of that aged cheddar cheese and that fresh, creamy, tangy goat cheese. And for whatever reason, if you've been afraid to try goat cheese, please make this the recipe that you do. And I guarantee it will not be the last time. Oh, and while you're eating this, if you happen to knock a piece of the goat cheese off onto the table, the farmer recommends you simply pick it up and smear it on your bread, and then just continue on as if nothing happened. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling the farmer's frittata, because legally I cannot disclose the name. Not only is this one of the greatest breakfasts you will ever eat, or lunch, or dinner for that matter, 
It's also probably the best way to use up seasonal vegetables, especially summer squash. So on behalf of myself and the farmer, I will finish by saying, we really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for all the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, in